Hi and welcome to Export Kit. In this example we're going to take a look at how to correctly organize and structure our layers and page items in Illustrator for an optimal export. Now we're going to be dealing with HTML in this example but this rule does apply to each output type. So if you're creating Android, iOS or WordPress you would still use these basic rules uh, to generate an optimal output. So the first thing we're going to look at with our Illustrator design is our actual layers. Now you can tell off the bat that what we have is one single single layer here. When you have this design structure, this is exactly what you'll get. And based on the elements that you have within, Export Kit will either just render one simple image or a group with a list of items. And that is not what you want for a production ready export. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to correctly name our layers and our page items with unique names and also give them a correct folder structure using Illustrator layers. And this is because Illustrator does not have a concept of folders similar to how Photoshop does. So what we're going to do first is we're going to name our general layer and let's just call this featured content. Now the next step we're going to do is we want to group these items and right here this is where they're located. Now for a base structure we always recommend that you use a header, a footer and content folder structure. So uh, let's go ahead and create that. Now we want our content and let's actually just select this to ensure we have the right layers and let's go ahead and create our header Now, you'll note the order that we place this, and this is because Export Kit always works bottom up. So our header, which is our first element here, and our content is the secondary, and our footer is the last. Now, it's very important that you place these bottom up for a correct export. If you had your header at the top and your footer at the bottom, you will get unexpected uh, display errors. So this is very, very important. So let's just go ahead and change that. Oh, sorry undid it a little bit too much. Now we named this featured content and this is another secondary note which is that you always want to have unique names as unique as you possibly can. In scenarios where you're creating a much more complex design you may have many different sections and uh, what you can easily do is give them a unique identifier by simply adding you know another piece of text with them. So for instance this is the feet footer and the feet content and the feet header. So this, this will just always ensure that there's an individual name for each element and group. So if we look inside of these, uh, what we'll see here is that we have icons, but they're basically groups within Illustrator. Now, how this will be treated is Export Kit will render a group as an image. So it's irrelevant how many child elements you have within a group. And if we open this up, we'll see that there's a compound. Well, there are two compound paths. So you don't need to worry about the name of the actual items within the group, but you do have to name your group. So let's go ahead and name these. Now we may even want to go further and give it another layer group uh, just in case we want to add additional elements later. Okay, so if we go ahead and we take a look at our featured content, you can see here that visually in the design we have two individual sections. So we can actually begin by creating those sections. So let's create So content left, and let's create a content right. Now we can simply select the items in our left column. And the other items are within our right. Now what we have are two individual paths, and we do not want to have the name paths within our layers or our page items simply because that is what it will render in the output. So we want to give these actual names. So if we were to hide this, you'll see that this is the arrow. So we can call this the, well, let's call it the image arrow. Uh, content image arrow. And this is the background. Let's go ahead now and let's rename these. So 
here we have, if we just hide this, you'll notice the date was hidden. So we can just actually call this the date. And this is the title. Uh, I believe this is the divider. And this is the description. Now, another thing to note with the description, when we take a look at it, you'll see that the description itself, it only has a size relative to where the text is. It's very important that what you do is you resize your text elements to the actual maximum size that you would like to give it. So for instance, in this case, we would rather our description encompass this entire area. So that way, if we have additional text to add within the region, we can add it and we know that it will fit. Otherwise, what will happen is that your text layer will only encompass this size. So if you were to add additional text, it would not be visible. Now, another key note is that what we're using here is paragraph text. And to ensure you're using paragraph text, there are two differences. If you simply click a layer and and start typing. What happens is that this now is treated as label text and the important difference is you'll notice that it scales a bit and that's not exactly what you're looking for. What we'd rather is that we actually have paragraph text that you draw to the area that you'd like and then you can resize accordingly and what it will do is maintain the text block within that area. So that is just an important description to note about paragraph text. Now we also have one last element and I believe that is the background. I think this is the extra type layer we created. So you'll see that we basically layered, uh, sorry, named our layers correctly within our content region. And the last section is our header. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now we have our background. And we also have our title. So now that we've correctly organized our elements, what we can do is we can export this as is. Now I know that it will generate errors and what we're going to do is take a look at these errors and see how we can correct these uh, for an optimal output. So let's go ahead and log in. Now once we've logged in, what you want to do is tab over to the exports panel, select HTML5. Now there's nothing else we really need to customize simply because we're doing an example. So let's go ahead and export this. Actually, let's cancel this really quick. Uh, an important thing you always want to do is save your progress. Uh, Export Kit will uh, basically reopen the file afterwards if you do not save it and you may lose your changes. So let's save this. And let's go ahead and re-export this. Now you'll see that we do have a few warnings that are being listed and this is very important. You must use RGB color in your output and I will show you exactly why. Another very common mistake is that RGB is not selected for strokes. So uh, if we take a look here, we'll see that our divider line, it's actually just a stroke. So there is no fill color and this is very important. You must have a fill color when you're using elements uh, just to avoid the warning. So if we take a look at our output, What you'll see is that it does not look uh, exactly as our design looks. There are images that are missing and all the text is black. So let's go ahead and see how we can correct this. So the first important thing is that you always want to ensure that your document color mode is RGB, not CMYK. So you can do this by accessing your file document color mode and selecting RGB color. Very important. Now, the next thing we want to note is that we saw that some images were missing. And uh, one of them, be it that this is the actual uh, background for the content left and also the arrow as well as the background for the featured. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So if we see our content image BG, it's a single uh, page item within our featured left. Now the quick way to solve this problem is that images are processed very differently in Illustrator. So what you always want to do is wrap your individual images in a container with the same name. So that might sound a little bit confusing, but it's very simple to do. What you do is create a layer, 
give that layer the exact same name as the image, then drag that image inside the layer. So basically, you'll end up with a layer with the name and a, a page item or an image with the actual name. This will ensure that your image renders correctly. So let's repeat that process uh, for the arrow as well. So we added a new layer. We're simply going to take the name of the arrow, we're going to copy it to the layer, and we're going to drag that item inside the new layer. So this will ensure that our images render. So what we want to do is we also want to do this for our header. So let's go and take a look. So we have our header BG. So let's create a layer. Let's copy the name and drag the element inside. So this will render our image correctly. So let's go ahead and let's save that again. Now we did see a few additional errors. Uh, one of them be it that our featured stories is not rendered as it is in our design. And this is another very important feature of Export Kit. We have additional text that is scoped outside. And you can tell this quickly in Illustrator because Illustrator will give you a plus sign to show that there's additional content beyond. So what we want to do to fix this really quick is that we can actually just ensure that the only text we have is featured. So let's turn on our caps and let's retype that now going back and looking at the design uh, you'll see that again it did a, a similar situation here where it had the text go beyond the actual scope but it is important within the actual creative that you do encompass the entire area that you want to fill now what we can do is we can go ahead and render this again and we can take a look at the output Oh, sorry, let's actually cancel this uh, simply because we need to save our progress. And let's do that again. Now, this is a very common situation where the Illustrator Prime error will occur. You must close and reopen Illustrator. So let's do that. So now that we've restarted Illustrator, what we can do is basically just re export. And now that it's complete, we can take a look and with the changes that we've made, let's just go ahead and refresh the page. Now you'll see that it does have the elements, but our featured content is the only thing missing. It's gone ahead and it's changed many things so that it does look substantially now more like the actual creative. So let's go ahead and let's fix that really quick. The reason why this did not render now was simply because we have a few layer items here, but we have a page item above. So what we can do is simply add this within its own layer content. Uh, let's call this the title container. Now you'll see that what we did differently was that for text, we are not giving it the exact same name. That, that rule only applies for images. Uh, what we can do is just call it a simple container drag our text within and this will now allow it to render correctly above the actual layers and this is very important this is because when rendering page items will render before layers so what happened was in the output our text rendered first and then our background rendered above it so to correct this what we do is simply add our text in another layer and then the layers will render in the correct order so we can go ahead save this re-export and again, you see that we have the prime error. We must restart Illustrator. So let's do that again. Okay, so now that we've restarted Illustrator, we can tab over to Exports. And we can go ahead and re-export and take a look at the difference. And let's refresh the page. And now you'll see that all our content rendered exactly as it did within Illustrator, minus a few rules which apply, which is that you had additional text in the design, so additional text rendered. And we can note this here. Let's just close off the plugin. Although it stops here, uh, if we were to actually resize this, you'll see that there is additional text content, so it did render. So 
these are simple steps that can be taken to basically give you an, an optimal output in any environment. You must name and organize your layers. There are some rules with images where you may need to now create a separate container for the image to basically give it the same name with the layer as the page item. There are a few rules with text elements where we showed that because the page item was there and it was not within a layer container, it rendered before the background, which gave us a display error. So a simple fix for that is to give it a, another container when you're actually uh, adding text above elements. So using these rules, you can have an optimal illustrator output without changing your design. The only thing you're really focused on is changing your layer structure.